Hello, hello! Welcome back to Perseverance Yoga. Today's class is highly requested. It is actually going to be part of a series called the Inversion Series. And this class is, drum roll please, handstands! You already saw it in the tagline, so no surprise there. But if you don't know what inversions are, inversions are essentially when we go upside down um, and that can be anything like even shoulder stand uh, can be an inversion, even forward fold can be an inversion, down dog is an inversion. But today we're focusing primarily on balancing, like handstands or headstands or even forearm balances. And today, handstand is our focus. I'm starting with handstand because I feel that it's the most safe. Uh, all of them can get pretty tricky, pretty scary when you go upside down and you're balancing on your hands. It's, it can be a little bit of a surprise. Um, it can be a big mental block. So we're going to practice the one that does not involve putting any weight on your head, and that's your handstand. So without further ado, you will need a wall. You will need a wall, pretty blank space. Hopefully there's nothing too close on either side of the wall. So if there's like a big shelf or you have a desk, we might want to clear some space. It is possible to do these exercises without the wall, but for some of them, it, it is necessary to have a wall. Um, so if you really want to start training your handstand, you will need to make some wall space. Go outside even. You can like take your phone outside and do some of the drills that we'll do up against the wall, maybe against the side of your house or the side of the Walmart that's near you. I'm kidding, don't do that. Um, let's get started, shall we? <laughs> so let's pull up the playlist. Um, nothing really special here, just some good tunes, all right? And we'll start that in three, two, and one. Okay, before we really get into it, I want you to understand what internal rotation is of your thighs. Um, and in general, so with your hands standing at attention, your palms turned out, this is external rotation of your arm bones. And when you turn your palms down and in, your arm bones internally rotate. Does that sort of make sense? So externally, they're turning outside, exterior, internally, they're turning inside, interior, yeah? So you can practice that a little bit with the rotation of the arm bone. And then we'll practice that with your legs. So when your toes are turned out, that's external rotation. And when your toes are turned in, that's internal rotation. But that can subtly happen in your thighs. So you could gently press your knees and thighs open like you were externally rotating the hips. And then internally rotating the hips is almost like when your knees sort of start to buckle in. So internal, external, and then let's practice it with your legs. So external, internal, or leg lifted, I should say. External, internal, external, internal. Out, in, out, in, yeah? Now let's bring it into downward facing dog. Hands to the mat, feet hip distance apart, and just pick up one foot, just about an inch off the floor. So I've got my left foot raised here, flex into the feet, and I'm gonna turn the toes out, and then turn them in as much as I can, and then we'll switch. So opposite foot lifts about an inch off the mat, turn the toes out, and then turn them in. And you kind of understand what I'm talking about. And then we'll start to lift that opposite leg as high as we can. When you turn the toes out, you'll notice your hips really open up here. And then when you turn the toes back and down, you want that internal rotation. Primarily for handstands, we're internally rotated. Primarily for handstands, we're internally rotated. Just gonna repeat myself on that one, okay? Let's try the other leg. So turn the toes out, and then bring it back and down and in. And this will just give you that understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about external or internal rotation. All right, come into child's pose. <sighs> Just rock your forehead side to side, relax your jaw, give your neck some space, some relief. Take some deep breaths in through your nose. Sigh it away. 
grip the ground with your fingertips and lift up your wrists and start to lift your heart and hover your head off the floor. Teeping up the fingers, strong arms. Wrist health is primary in handstands, so we'll be doing some wrist stuff as well to prepare. And if at, at any point you feel pain in the wrists or you need to take a break, please do. Please do. Good, now start to roll up and bring your knees together. Come to sit on your heels and take your hands behind you. Try to press the fingers into the floor and then push the wrists down as well. Magnetize shoulder blades, lift heart up for three. In the nose, out the nose for two. And for one. Push off the floor, inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Now from here, I want you to take your fingertips way, way towards the back wall behind you and press your wrists up to the sky. This is your handstand in your hands, just like to the ceiling, right? Like almost as if you could push the ceiling up. So it's a pretty big extension on the wrist. Flexion, extension. That's for another class. <laughs> now notice when you lift up your arms, your ribs sort of puff out and you take a little back bend. At least for me, that's the case. We want to soften those front ribs down towards the back ribs. And this core engagement is what's so important in maintaining and holding your handstand away from the wall. It's pretty challenging, so that's why we warm up into the arms, opening up the arm bones. For two, straight strong arms. And for one, roll out the wrists. Catch the left, left wrist, finger and thumb and find just a little bit of space. So it's that space in between the hand and the arm bone. We're just trying to create some uh, traction by gently pulling, letting synovial fluid in. It's just good juice for your wrists. And then we'll switch it out. Mm -hmm. Good juice. <laughs> just like wine or coffee, the best kinds of juices. Okay, or Lizzo. Lizzo has a great juice. If you don't know that song, maybe I'll put it on the playlist. All right, now shake out your wrists. Woo! And these are not AirPods. I'm not fancy, so they come flying out all the time. <laughs> and then reach them up to the sky. Oh, all right. Roll out those shoulders and switch directions. And then take your hands onto your shoulders, cross your arms in front of you. Start to come up onto your knees, engaging your core. We're gonna find thoracic rotations. So we're moving the mid spine and rotating around, opening up the back and then sort of finding a little back bend here and then switch it out. Your thoracic is your middle spine. Your lumbar is your low spine, cervical is your neck and thoracic is the middle spine. Oof. Okay, find a little back and forth. And then take your hands to your hips and we'll take the neck around, so cervical spine rotations. And avoid any pain and go really slow. And if at any point you need a blanket under your knees, feel free to grab one. I know I didn't set you up necessarily, but I'll put it in the description. All right. And roll the shoulders back and down. Catch the left arm. Find a little stretch here. And switch it out. Catch the right. Pull it across the chest. Nice. Let's come back into downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, heels down and towards the floor. You don't have to actually make contact, but that's the energy. All right, now we start to tiptoe. So come all the way up onto your tiptoes. Engage your core, start to tiptoe forward towards your hands, trying to keep all the way onto the tiptoes the whole way there. Ooh, you'll notice it starts to get really challenging at the front and your wrists start to sort of buckle and maybe your elbows bend. Try to keep the arms straight. Inhale, come up for halfway. 
Exhale, fold right back down. Inhale, come up halfway. Maybe come up onto the toes. Exhale, fold right back down. And one more. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, heels down, bend your knees to have a seat. Lift your legs up, boat pose, Navasana. So we gotta get into that core, right? So we can support ourselves. Straighten the legs as high as you can. Lift your heart as high as you can. And hold for five. For four. So maybe practice internal rotation and external rotation here. So you can see what it's like. Charlie Chaplin, toes out, that's external. Uh, toes in, pigeon toed, that's internal. And clicking your heels, look while we're going home, is external. Big breath in, and lower down for a low boat, point through the toes. Charging up the belly, breathing in. And lift up one more time, high boat. Good, and low boat, hands behind your head. Let's take a couple bicycles, opposite knee, opposite elbow. See if you can keep those shoulders off the mat. Nice and slow at first for two, for one. Now let's pick up the pace, maybe straighten the legs. Your choice. And can you work on internal rotation here as opposed to external rotation, toes out? Maybe a little bit of toes in for four, for three, for two, for one. Cross the ankles, we rock into plank pose, step, step. Come over to the right side plank, drop the heels, lift the left hand, look up. How's that breath? Big breaths, come back to center, and we switch. Side plank, lift the hips, engage the core, stack the hips for two. And for one, back to center, downward facing dog. Let's move through a little flow, and then we're gonna start with some uh, Handstand drills, how's that? Getting right into it today. Right leg high to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Let's go two more times, inhale high. Exhale, knee to nose. Use that back leg for support, inhale high. Exhale, knee to nose, step it through your thumbs. Inhale, day kasana, it's halfway between low lunge and crescent. So you're reaching your arms forward, flat spine for three. Two, warrior three on one. Lift the back leg, lift the upper body, pull in the belly, two breaths. Exhale, lower the leg back, inhale, rise up, crescent lunge, open up warrior two. Take a reverse, right hand to the sky. And exhale, windmill the front foot. Find your first vinyasa or move towards down dog. For vinyasa, we really want a strong core today. Ripple forward and always. Shift that weight forward. Bend the elbows back. Heart 90 degrees. Inhale, up dog. For two. And when I say heart at 90 degrees, I mean elbows, heart parallel to the floor. Forgive me back to down dog and I'll go over that again so it makes more sense big breath in exhale left leg to the sky knee the nose inhale exhale last two and step it through we find day kasana it's like this half lift into crescent Pull the belly in, float the ribs up towards the back ribs. Reach the arms forward for two. For one, warrior three. Back leg lifts, flex into the foot. Strong, straight bottom leg as best as you can. All right, touch the toes back down. Inhale, lift up, crescent. Open, warrior two. Fill up those lungs. Reverse the front hand, take a reverse all the way. And come back to warrior two. Windmill to vinyasa flow. And here's where I'll break it down. So 90 degrees happens in the elbows and your heart is parallel to the floor. Inhale, up dog. 
That's what I meant. Exhale, down, replacing dog. Good work, smooth breath in. Smooth breath out. All right, let's find another little flow here. Right leg high to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose, step it through right away. Dekhasana, reach the arms forward. Warrior three. Exhale, toes tap right back down. Inhale, crescent. Open warrior two. Take your reverse. Vinyasa. And let's go left side. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, step it through the thumbs. Rise up, Dekhasana, flat spine, heart forward. Reach the hands forward. Warrior three. For two. For one, back to crescent. Inhale, reach up. Open, warrior two. Reverse. Windmill to flow. And last little round here, we're gonna add on some stuff. Right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it through Dekhasana. Lift up, reach the arms forward. Warrior three. Hands down, leg high, standing needle. Here's when we get into our first round of handstand drills. Your choice, you can either lift up onto the toe and lower down, so that base toe, you're lifting all the way up, lowering down, keep the arms as straight and strong as possible, and internally rotate that top leg. So if the toes are turned out, internally rotate the toes in. You're lifting up and down, and maybe you even bend the bottom leg and kick the heel up towards your high knee. Bend the bottom leg, kick the heel up towards your high knee. Let's try one more. Good, inhale, rise up, crescent. Open warrior two. We traveled quite a bit, inhale, reverse. Exhale, vinyasa. Now you can start to see how this is a strong upper body class. <laughs> Down dog. Let's go left side, inhale, reach. Exhale, step it through. Dekhasana, arms forward. Warrior three. Four, three, two, hands down, leg up, one. Okay, you can either try to lift up onto those toes, strong straight arms, grip the ground with the fingers, spread those fingers wide. Or you can start to bend into the bottom knee. Bend, keep the top leg straight, internally rotated and try to kick your heel as you hop up, or kick the heel to your high knee as you hop up. Ah, you see, it's, I know it's challenging, but you have to kick the heel all the way up, keep the back leg active and strong, maybe flex it. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and crescent lunge, inhale, reach up. Exhale, open warrior two. Full disclosure, reverse inhale. I do not have my handstand perfectly. It is a long time coming, windmill to flow vinyasa, or down dog, or child's pose. Take a little breather. You can rest the back of your, palm, your hands down in child's pose. <sighs> so I have been practicing yoga for seven years and I still don't have my handstand like perfect. It is a very challenging thing to get to. Um, this is strengthening work we're doing today. You should not expect to have it. This is something you can do all the time, the flow, the movements, the drills to build up to handstand. I still build up to handstand constantly. I'm closer than I've ever been because I practice and work on it, but it's truly not a priority for me like it may have been when I first started yoga and I was like, oh, I want to have a handstand because that's the coolest thing. You know, you see pictures of it, but that's not what yoga is about. Yoga is about listening to your body and understanding it. So take your breather, take your rest here. Do what you got to do. Maybe drink some water because that was already quite a lot of work. We're going to get back into it before we come to our wall. Core strengthening is the number one thing for handstands. Upper body strength as well, definitely. But if you do not have core strength, 
you will not hold your handstand and you will feel very unconfident putting your legs above your head. So we work on that core strength first, posture, and then we can get to a place where we feel confident sort of throwing handstands in the middle of the room, which is something that I find very entertaining when I'm bored. Um, I don't recommend it in public spaces, okay? So come up from child's pose or down dog wherever you were. Um, we're gonna come into tabletop, maybe take some cat cows, but first I wanna show you a little wrist stretch you can start to incorporate. Fingers towards one another, bend into the elbows, back of the hands down, bend and straighten. And then flip the palms down, the fingers away, and start to take the weight side to side here, straight strong arms. Yeah, good, and then flip one finger towards you, back of the hand down, and then the other one opposite, and see what it's like to sink the hips back a bit here. Ooh. And then we'll switch it out. Oh, me oh my. Yeah, good, big breath. Sinking the hips back gently, and we bring it back. And then tuck your toes, sit back on your heels, interlace your hands, make little figure eights. Figure eights. I've already got the crazy handstand hair going on here. All right, let me see what time do I have. All right, now release your hands. Let's get back into it. And we're coming into down dog. Inhale big. Exhale right leg high. Knee into your nose, take it to your right elbow, left, right, left, right, left, for four, three, two, one, inhale, take that leg back up. From here, float the right toes just about an inch above the floor and bend into the left knee. Now from here, could you try to find that little same hop situation that we did at the top of the mat? So bending into the left knee, trying to get the left heel to the left tiny, boop, all the way from your down dog and the toes just hover above the mat. <sighs> Little kick-ups. Good. <sighs> All right, knee to nose, step the foot between your thumbs. Dekasana, reach the arms forward. <sighs> Warrior three, launch the leg off. Lift the leg, lift the arms, the upper body. Exhale, hands down, head down. Standing needle, turn the toes in. Find a couple more hops here. So this stuff, you don't necessarily need the wall, but it's always good to have a little bit of support. <sighs> Woo! So you gotta bend into the knee. What I just made as a mistake was keeping the bottom leg straight. You gotta bend and get the heel to the high knee. <sighs> oh me. <laughs> See? Still a challenge. Seven years, still very challenging. So be patient with yourself. Let's take crescent lunge. Right leg forward, inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Flip the front palm, reverse, windmill, and frame it off. We're working on it together, aren't we, friends? Yes, indeed. Left leg lifts, knee to nose, to the left, to the right, left, right, left, right. Carving out that core, inhale, lift it up. Exhale, toes float an inch above the floor. Right knee bends. And we're kicking right heel to high knee, left leg to the sky. <laughs> Working on that control, keeping the feet flexed on the left foot, even the right a little bit. Good, knee to nose, decasana. Reach it forward. Warrior three. Standing needle, leg to the sky, shake out your head. Okay, I promise after this, all we have is the wall stuff and you'll be done. Bend into the bottom knee, turn the right toes down and in to internally rotate. It gives you a better stability for your core. That's why I'm putting so much focus on it. And then heel to high knee. Straight, strong arms. Keep those arms nice and straight. Ooh! And let's find crescent lunge. Left leg forward. 
right here with you. Open up warrior two. Reverse inhale. Vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Okay. Walk your hands to the back of the mat, forward fold. Step on your hands. Bring the toes in towards the wrist, so fingers towards your heels. And release. And then pull the arms. So release the neck, pull the arms, and you get this gentle traction opening up the wrists here. And then release that and bend into the elbows and let your head go. Two. And one. Okay, release the hands. Stand up. Take a couple step touches. Shake it out. The head is going to rush from the blood. It shows you where my brain... The blood is going to rush from the head down, so you'll get a little lightheaded or, you know, forget what you're saying. And I'm going to turn it so you can see what's happening over here. I recommend bringing your mat up to the wall. This guy. You will move to the side here. Sorry, Bella. Okay. So first things first, this is one of the number one ways to measure out your handstand. It's called the L stand. You take about a you know, a step or two away from the wall and you measure your foot away from the wall. So for me, I need to walk my foot in a little more because you want the ankle to be right underneath the hip and that's a little too close. So something like right here is the perfect distance for me. So I measure where my foot is, I turn on the same measure and I put my hands there and that's where the hands go and then I start to walk the feet up the wall, and this is when it gets really tricky. I recommend staying bent knees at first, strong straight arms, and you'll notice right away, oh boy, pull that core in, ribs to the back wall, and start to straighten out your legs. Now ideally your hips are right over your wrists, and you can bend, and you can straighten, and you gotta grip the ground with your fingertips. It's super hard, but bend and straighten, you can lift one leg at a time. So I was somewhere around here, so I'll show you that one more time. Leg, where's the foot? You want a perfect 90 degree angle, feet underneath the hips, because you also don't want to push past your limit. And then you can lift one leg above your hips, flexing into the foot, maybe try tapping the toe away from the wall. Woo! And then you can switch it out. Lifting one leg, pulling up through the core, tap, tap, tap. <sighs> Taking care of your wrists. <sighs> I find handstand to be much easier for those of you with shorter torsos. You have less back bend working against you, because you'll notice when I go up, and I'm not perfect at this, remember, my back starts to bend. Ideally, we incorporate this perfectly straight spine, almost like a posterior tilt of the pelvic bowl, which just means up and in. Okay, let's try this one more time. Practicing, challenging ourselves, even warming it up right here. Arms up, this is what I should look like, just down. So I might even try to keep the foot there and see what it looks like to keep the foot there while I lift the other leg up. Woo! Core's knitting in, and then tap the leg away from the wall. Doing your best. Oh yeah. And you might feel a moment of suspension. Maybe not, I'm gonna do it on the other side. So what I did was leg in, turning to twist down, keeping the leg connected, and then pulling the other leg through and up to find. Oh, I feel like I'm really far away from the wall, but that's okay for now. Woo! 
Hard stuff, okay. Stretch those wrists. Shake them out. And then one more thing, and I think that'll be enough for today for handstands, because this you can practice every day. You can try to incorporate it every day. All right, so if you have blocks, I'll show you how you can do it with the blocks and without. This time we're facing the wall. I have my blocks shoulder distance apart. Start in down dog. And just like we did with uh, standing needle kickups, down dog kickups, it's the same thing. But this time we have the wall, so we can sort of gauge off the wall. Lift one leg, bend the bottom knee. Try to get the heel to the high knee. Yeah. And at first you may not make it where your hips are up above your head. Ooh! <laughs> but eventually you'll get there and you might even slam into the wall. You might not. And without the blocks, it's the same thing. Hands grip the earth, lift one leg. Oh my God. So apparently it's really hard on your blocks and I just didn't know that because <laughs> I flew into the wall just now. <laughs> and then you'll want to switch it out. So whichever leg you were working with, you want to use the other leg too. And we always have a worse side. See, that's a little too much energy. I'm really flinging myself up there without control. Ideally, you start to float and have control. Oh my God. <laughs> this shows you how reluctant I was to doing this class <laughs> because it's my weakest point. Okay. Hopefully that we can find this journey together and I can get over my fear of handstands along with you. I'm, be I'm jealous of Bella. Bella's just laying here sleeping. Let me show you her. Oh. Sweet little baby. Sweet, lucky little baby. Okay. All right. Trying the blocks one more time, and then I lied. I have one more move for you to practice, and then that's it. Okay, the blocks are really challenging. I did not realize how much of a challenge they are, but I think it's good for training um, strength because I guess you have to hop even higher since now you're a little taller because of the blocks. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so challenging. I'm gonna separate them a bit. Strong straight arms are the key and looking forward is also the key. Oh my God, head up against the wall. I'm up on the tippy toes. My heel is coming up to my high knee. Good. And then once you're up there, oh my God, see, the blocks really make me feel like it's so much harder than what it is. We start to hover the feet, flex the feet away from the wall. And then you'll find that straight, strong straight arms suspension. Woo! Holy moly. Child's pose or lying on your back are great ways to recover from handstand work. Maybe some happy baby. We have one more. Love you. Just one. You're gonna be sore in places you didn't think you could be sore in tomorrow. I mean, duh, your arms, but you're gonna be like, why, do my, why are my thighs sore? <laughs> What's that about? Hi, Belly. Oh, yes, hello. She's like, no more, let's go lay down. <laughs> okay. Rocking up. Take care of those wrists. Maybe even a little bit of ibuprofen or ice. It can get intense. After, not now. <laughs> All right, so for this next one, these are called frog hops, and you might have done these with me in class because I like to just randomly sprinkle them in, but you start in down dog. You take the toes a little bit together, but the knees bend outwards and away. So this one, you do have external rotation of the thighs. They bend outwards and away, and you find little pulses, and then think about putting your butt over your head. So. Yeah, oh my god, I'm so tired. 
I feel like all of the veins in my forehead like bulging through. Okay, one more time. Bend into the knees. Heels to booty, hips overhead. You have to really get low and just pounce. Just do it. Yeah. And then maybe float the toes away from the wall. You can practice that a little bit more. Can you tell how much I don't wanna do it anymore? But I'm like, we must, we must keep going in order to get stronger. Oh, strong straight legs. Whoa! Last one, last one, and then we'll stretch. Oh my God, okay, yeah, I don't have any more in me. Let's bring it back to center. Holy, painful handstands, man. Okay, come onto your belly. Take your arms out like a T. Let's find a shoulder stretch to the left. Drop the left ear down, right leg comes behind. Relax your head. The top hand can start to reach up and bind to the low back. And you can also bend into the left elbow. Two breaths. Good, let's come back to center. How did you do? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what was really hard and switch it out. And let me know what was kind of fun or what you were confused about. This is a series, next will be probably forearm balance. Headstand is really scary for me to teach you without being there in person. Just because it's your neck. And God forbid something happens and I'm not there and can't help you, can't spot you. And come back to center. And take your hands together in front of your forehead, one on top of the other and just rest your forehead. Breathe into your belly on the floor, massage your stomach. Bend into your knees and start to take them side to side. Good. Push the floor away, child's pose. Take the back of the hands towards your hips. Okay, start to roll up. Find a little seat on your heels again. Take your right hand out, turn the back of the palm down, back of the hand, the palm back, back of the hand to the low back. Sorry, words. All this flipping upside down. <laughs> and bring the left ear to the left shoulder. Relax the shoulders, relax the jaw. Softly let the wrist unfold out of the back and take the head back up through center. Open up the left arm out, palm faces back, back of the hand to the low back, roll the shoulder head down, right ear, right shoulder. Last breath, ah, side away. Take that hand back out. Take your hands to your belly, just connect to your breath. Your posture is more important than nailing a handstand, and so is the longevity of your health or your body, your health and your body.
So focus on that before you get discouraged about how difficult your handstand is. Because trust me, <laughs> I get it. I'm right here with you. Hands come to prayer. Thank you so much for joining. Namaste.